Hi, this is Bill Newman. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Longevity Technology. And today I'm joined by Andrew Olson, who is the founder and CEO of the Youth Longevity Association. Hey, Andrew. Hello, very nice to meet you. Oh, well, great. Pleasure to have you on the, on the show today. And obviously, great to, to see the work that you've been doing, obviously, at the ARDD conference and um, the, the activities you've got going on on YouTube. So just really interested to understand what the mission of the association is. Of course. So the Youth Longevity Association aims to foster young high school students into expert longevity uh, longevity experts. And the idea is really to give them the needed experience through going to conferences, speaking to longevity experts, getting career advice from mentors and understanding what it is like to be in the longevity field and also preparing them for future work recruitment. And so the goal, the end point would be really to foster a community of these high school students who can then be recruited by different longevity companies and help contribute to the longevity community. That's great. So so what motivated you to start the association in the first place? Um, so it was a result of my in silico internship and my RDD ambassadorship, I guess, combined. At RDD in 2021, I first presented a project that I did at Ancilico Medicine. It was one of my very first scientific internships, and it was a very exciting journey for me. And so really the whole event, the buzz around the longevity topic was just so inspiring. I thought, why not create something for youth? Because at the moment, it's mostly available just for the older populations or generations rather. And then high school students, for example, they don't even know that such a field exists up until you kind of tell them or they read an article about it. And I thought, I'd want to spread awareness about this topic and involve more people in it. Well, that's great. And of course, uh, the industry is growing very significantly now, um, a lot of people like yourself, right? You know, other people are seeing that the industry is happening, and they're a lot older than you and your and your fellow members. So, um, do you see yourself uh, as longevity as a you know science and business future career for yourself? Yeah, that's definitely something I'm considering. I always want to stay on the path of science because science, to me, is understanding something about the world that is not that evident. But then you kind of like look a little bit deeper into it, and you get this feeling of satisfaction that you kind of are discovering something and I really like that and of course uh, I'd want to connect it to business as well. So tell me about the um, the way the association works what what do you do on a uh, on a regular basis do you do um, you know videos or you know do you uh, do other things that are helping to build the community? Sure. So right now, the main idea is to organize interviews that we have weekly with longevity experts. For example, we recently interviewed Dr. Fei Fang, uh, Evandro Fei Fang, and we went to the Longevity Summit. So, for example, interviews in combination with going to different conferences. I'm also preparing a high school longevity course that people will get to take once they join the Youth Longevity Association. So that is also quite a big part of what I'm doing right now. Another part is finding those high school students who would be interested in joining the Youth Longevity Association. And that means really doing quite deep, also demographic research online, for example, and also just asking people at my school um, and presenting these sort of, um, well, pitching TILA at different conferences, for example, to see whether people would be interested and then finding members through that. So I guess it's a, an obvious question. Um, are you finding that people in your age group uh, that you're looking to recruit, do they do they see that this is something that is uh, valid to them as obviously young people, you know, that probably won't feel their own longevity for another 20 years or so themselves? I mean, do you, do you see that people get it? Yeah, in fact, I was quite surprised by how many people were interested in like doing something longevity related at this stage. I thought, well, at first I thought this might not be a very popular topic amongst younger people. They might not be interested at all. But really, even last week, um, I'm the CEO of our school, um, this magazine, school science magazine called The Catalyst. And I just got together a group of 20 people who would be writing for The Catalyst. And last week I just said, hey guys, I've started a company, the Youth Longevity Association. Do you want to join by any chance? And quite a few people were interested. And I'm really happy about that because I think it's important that science students are interested in this sort of topic because if they're not interested, of course, they should do something that they're more inclined to do. But when they are interested in something like longevity, then 
that's definitely a, a good path. Yeah, great. And uh, obviously, that's a local based activity, you know, based on what you're doing with your school. But um, do you have members coming from overseas as well, like American members of the association? Yeah, we have a very international community, actually. We have some people from Hong Kong, some from the US, so California, Florida. And the best part is that we can all communicate quite quickly. I mean, we all use the same social media like WhatsApp, Instagram, etc. And so we can communicate with each other within seconds. And for example, one of my roles is really coming up with those tasks that everyone has to do. Um, so I consult people about what they're interested in doing. For example, some are more inclined to do social media and marketing, where the, whereas others want to do some research, maybe, or third-party communication with um, different sponsors or mentors or potentially places where we can present. And really the fact that we can all communicate <laughs> within such a like large distance is a really exciting opportunity, in my opinion. Yeah, that's wonderful. So what do you have in mind in the future? Are you looking to do things like uh, hackathons and um, helping people with scholarships and that type of thing? Is is there a, a plan for helping people obviously understand what's going on within longevity and then obviously use their, their early interest and engagement to make that early stage on their career path? Yes, that's exactly what we're planning to do. So, so far, uh, we've competed in two hackathons. Both were hosted by Junction. It's um, quite a large hackathon. And the first one we went to was uh, virtual. And there we won uh, third place. Whereas in the live one that happened in Espo in Finland this year, uh, we didn't win any place, but we came up with a pretty cool project. And um, so through hackathons, through conferences, through these interviews that we host with different longevity experts, that's the way I hope people will get more experience. And I'm always open for feedback and any suggestions from experts. For example, if they have any new ideas for us that would help us get experience, then of course, all of these suggestions are welcome. Um, also, joining the Youth As uh, Longevity Association means that you have access to this um, live longevity course, which we'll be hosting next summer hopefully. Um, and of course, after completing that course, students will be really well acquainted with longevity basics and career basics in science. And so then they can, of course, take part in all the weekly interviews that we host, go to conferences. And the idea is that at some point, they can also apply for funding of their own scientific projects, or potentially scholarships to universities and other educational institutions. Well, that sounds wonderful, Andrea. So how do uh, new members find out more about the organization and how, how, the, how to join? So I would definitely check out the Youth Longevity website. It's T-Y-L-A, full stop, I-O. And there we have several pages with information about what we do, what opportunities there are, who our mentors are, how you can join as a member or student, as a mentor or as a sponsor. Um, there are three application pages for that. They're really quite simple, straightforward. And for any students who want to join, just fill out the application form. Um, and to get there, you click on action and then join us. It's, it's pretty simple on the website. Um, and then I'll receive this application. And what happens next is that I and some other students will interview you as a student, a uh, potential member for the Youth Longevity Association. And we would just like to know what sort of experience you've had, where your interest lies and why you want to join the association so that we know what sort of tasks you can take on, what you can help us with and how we can help you enter longevity research better. And of course, we're also open to anybody who are interested in mentoring us in longevity or career. So we're always looking for business experts, perhaps CEOs, researchers, etc. And of course, we're always open to sponsors who'd like to support the work as well. Great, Andrew. So that's wonderful that you're doing all of that work. So um, uh, very excited to learn that you're you're doing your event next year. So best of luck with that and keep us posted. And thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Phil.